Time for the next big trade where we uncover Wall Street's boldest predictions, and we got a couple for you. Comes through Morgan Stanley strategist Adam Parker. He has boldly gone where no other <laughs> strategist has gone. How do you like that? His 1167 <laughs> target for the S&P 500 this year. It's the lowest in our Bloomberg survey was last year too. He proved to be exactly right. He was the most accurate forecaster of the stock market. So you know what? He got it right last year. Maybe he's going to get it right this year. That's not so good for the bulls because, of course, remember, he's talking about down 17% from here. All right, let's get to his trades. He's got three pairs trades for us. In other words, you want to be long one thing and you want to sell another. So I'll tell you what, let us start us right off with semis versus industrials. You like semis, you don't like industrials. Walk us through the logic of this thing. Well, most of the semiconductor companies have already missed estimates. They've already guided down. I think most investors expect they'll guide down again here during April earnings. So there's a chance later in the year that they could recover, particularly because they're underproducing consumption right now. Many of the big machinery stocks, they beat and raised all through last fall and the early spring, and you're starting to see some of the data yesterday that their orders, while high in absolute terms, are decelerating. Uh, so the Why good do you news pair these together? Out. I mean, like, what, what is the link between the two? What, what yeah. made you think semis versus machines? You know, Trish, portfolio managers try to find things with the same beta, the same bounce in the portfolio. If they only went for all risky, bouncy things, then they'd really be in trouble if the market rolled over. So if they're uh, preferring one of these bouncy sectors to another, you can kind of keep them a little more balanced, not making a huge market bet here in the next couple of months. So we think they can prefer semiconductors here because the estimates, uh, people know they're going to miss, and then there's a chance things improve later in the year. I think the risk reward skewed to the positive for them over some of the machinery names. Now, also help us understand why typically semiconductors are more of a, an early cycle play, industrials a later cycle play, and yet this time around it seems kind of flip-flopped. It could be from the, the China infrastructure play. But remember, there isn't a machinery product that doesn't have silicon in the cockpit. So it, it would be hard for them to disconnect too much on the growth perspective. So I think it's about sentiment and expectations. I don't think people are expecting machinery stocks to mix, miss. I think they're more comfortable with semis. So I'd rather arbitrage that expectation. You've got two other pairings I think you're going to share with yeah, us. Yeah, another one I like right now is I like banks, and I prefer them to consumer discretionary stocks like retailers and restaurants. Here's the logic. Both banks and discretionary companies have the same exposures to jobs data, to housing, and to the interest rates. But the banks, they, they still massively underperformed consumer over the last couple of years. Yeah, they've caught up a little in the last couple of weeks. But if the earnings season goes okay, capital markets activity has been pretty good, I think there's a chance they act better here over the next couple of months than the retailers and restaurants. You think Europe's out of the way? You're not worried about that at all for the banks? I'm worried about Europe in the medium to long term, but the, the quarter seems to be tracking pretty well for most of the big banks, and I think you'll see the multiple continue to release on them over the next couple of months. Remember, they are correlated to the same things in terms of the rates in, in the U.S. economy uh, as the retailers and restaurants. Okay, and you, you think then the jobs, because uh, you're, you're very bearish, but it sounds like you do think the jobs data is going to continue to improve. So th they could e easily both go lower. But I think the, the financials will go less uh, down than because the they're already down so because much. they've already been beaten down with so yeah. much more uh, discounted in, into their uh, prospects. Understood. And by the way, a lot of guys come on the show and they talk about regionals as opposed to the money center banks or Wall Street exposure banks. Yeah. Uh, do you have a, a, a preference? Are you are you on the same side of that trade? Well, it's interesting. I actually think that makes sense. The regionals because they they could sometimes isolate them more to that to the housing and jobs data, and then you could say, well, purely and simply, if I prefer some of these to to retailers and restaurants with the same exposures, I probably generate some excess excess return in the portfolio. Aerospace versus oil. You like aerospace, you don't like oil. Why not? Well, look, we're underweight energy. That's been our main call this year. I just can't figure out what oil price is good for the stocks. In other words, I guess if oil fell down sharply to 90 and then began modestly rising because you thought global economy was improving, mm -hmm. okay, that'd be the great scenario. But up here at 125, it's very, on Brent, it's very hard to create a story that you won't see demand destruction soon. So I like underweight energy. And I think people are very negative on uh, aerospace and defense in terms of sentiment, in terms of sequestering the budget uh, and, and the long-term prospects. A lot of the companies have good cash flows, good dividend yields. So I think that's a, a sensible pair trade uh, I mean, you know, without a market. Direction Let bet. me ask, is it a bet at all on, on growing conflict um, that we're seeing in the Middle East? Well, uh, no, no, not overtly for sure, but I would say this. Oil is up, in my view, because of fears of supply constraint. An equity market typically doesn't work in that environment. It has so far, and our bet is Brent can't go up much more without it impacting the equity market. Okay.